It's been several months since I've given an update on Amazon stock and because they are currently my second largest stock investment, I thought today would be as good a time as any to give you guys an update on Amazon and let you know if I still consider this to be a good long-term investment for the future. So in today's video, we're gonna do a recap on Amazon's business. We'll take a look at the markets that they're already dominating and which other markets they plan to dominate in the future. And we'll also take a look at the stock and the valuation. And I'll let you know if I plan on either buying holding or possibly even selling any Amazon stock anytime soon. So it should be a very fun video. I hope you guys enjoy this. Let's go ahead and get started. What's up everyone? My name is Ale. Welcome back to my world of stocks. All right, let's go ahead and jump into uh, the stock and the valuation, which I think we can all uh, pretty much assume is going to be very rich. And then we'll transition over to their business and see if the high price tag for the stock is justified when looking at their performance. Okay, so in the past five years, the stock has performed extremely well, climbing by over 423%. It's crazy to think that some of my earlier videos on the channel were of me talking about the fact that I was buying the stock heavily at around seven or $800 a share, saying that it absolutely deserves to trade north of $1,000. And I would get a lot of, you know, kind of <laughs> mixed feedback from a lot of value investors who called me crazy for thinking that it deserved to trade at such a high price. But you know, fast forward to today and now we're usually talking about Amazon trading near $2,000 a share. So it's just crazy to see all the progress that this stock has made in such a small amount of time. In any case, with the stock currently trading in the $1,700 range, the valuation can indeed be considered very rich as they trade for around 73 times their trailing earnings. Now in defense of the stock, their forward P ratio improved dramatically all the way down to just 53 times forward earnings and the real crazy part of all this is that when you factor in their future growth over the next five years their PEG ratio drops to less than one be honest with me guys did you ever think that you would see Amazon stock trade again for a PEG ratio of less than one that is unbelievably cheap for such a massive and dominant company in fact if we take a look at some of the other giants and very popular companies like Apple Microsoft Microsoft, Google, and Facebook, we can see that their PEG ratios are all much higher than Amazon. So it's really not all that expensive when you consider their enormous growth. If we take a look at their sales over the past four years, we can see that they've grown their revenue from just $100 billion in 2015 to over $230 billion last year. And even with that already massive size, they're still expected to keep growing at very high rates into the future as well. Sure, these growth rates have dropped from around 30% over the last couple years, but considering how large they've already become, growing at almost 20% in 2019 and 2020 is still extremely impressive. And even more impressive are their growing profits that have now climbed from just about half a billion dollars of net income in 2015 to over $10 billion last year. That's nearly a 1600% increase over that time period. And again, this growth is continuing well into the future as their EPS is expected to climb by 17% this year, 41% next year, and average around 83% over the next five years. So this is clearly a company that is absolutely on fire right now, and there are really no signs of slowing down. But it is one thing to only look at the numbers without actually researching the business and diving a little bit deeper. So let's now take a look at how they're actually dominating these markets, and let's also take a look at what other markets they're trying to kind of tap into for sustained growth well into the future. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, well, as a company, Amazon has many different parts to their business, and that's allowed them to compete across a number of different markets, but the most obvious place to start is with their online shopping business. Now, in their last quarter alone, their online sales brought in over $31 billion of revenue and still managed to grow by 16% year over year. What's even crazier to note is that a recent revision in their projected market share of online shopping in the United States 
by a top analyst site called eMarketer puts their market share at less than 37% last year. Keep in mind that the market share of online shopping as a whole was only about 10% of all US retail last year. And that's a segment of the market that is expected to grow from just half a trillion dollars last year to almost three quarters of a trillion dollars in just a few years. And by the way, whenever I say just like just half a trillion, obviously that's an enormous gigantic number. But the crazy thing is that these numbers are getting even bigger in the future. So you basically have a situation where the market is already enormous, yet it's only a small portion of all retail and is growing by very large amounts every year. And Amazon already brings in a ton of revenue from it, yet they themselves only have a small percentage of the entire pie. I know that sounds a little confusing, but it's kind of crazy to think about. And that's just in, in the United States that we're talking about. But globally, online shopping has only made up less than 12% of all retail last year and is expected to grow to be worth almost $5 trillion in just a couple years from now. And Amazon hasn't really tapped into this market at all yet, as Statista estimates their global market share at just around 5% outside of the United States. And this is before the most recent revision that would probably sink that percentage even lower. So without making everything too confusing or too complicated, all of this basically means that Amazon already has a gigantic e-commerce business, in fact, the largest one in the world, and yet they still have an enormous amount of room to keep growing in the future. But of course, we know that e-commerce is not the only part of their business. They also have the largest cloud computing platform in the world called Amazon Web Services that commanded the most market share last quarter at about 32%, which is well ahead of other giants like Microsoft, Google, and Alibaba, yet it still only makes up around 11% of the revenues, but grew by a massive 47% last year, which was up from 43% growth the year prior. So it's a segment that is absolutely on fire for Amazon. And it doesn't stop here. Amazon also has a number of other well-performing businesses too, like Prime Video for the video streaming market, which is a market that is already worth close to $25 billion. And sure, Prime Video is already included with a Prime membership, but that's just another incentive to convince you to pay $120 a year to Amazon, which is a great source of enormous recurring revenue to, uh, to have that Amazon Prime membership. And you can also get Prime Video individually which I didn't even know about, but apparently you can pay just around $9 a month to get Prime Video without uh, the Prime membership. Either way, Amazon benefits from the well over 100 million Prime members around the world, with 82% of US households having a Prime membership. That's a huge user base to take advantage of and sell even more products to as well. Not to mention that they also own Twitch, which is a video game streaming platform that is also a huge play on the rise of esports, a market that has grown to be worth over a billion dollars this year with growth of almost 27% and an audience base of almost half a billion people with growth of 15% as well. On top of that, Amazon sells a number of connected devices like their Alexa, Echo, and Ring products that collect a ton of user data that advertisers find very valuable. In fact, Amazon's advertising business is reported under their other segment, which consistently grows by huge rates every quarter, and that's an overall market that will surpass half a trillion dollars in just a few years when looking at digital ad spending. And finally, I'll just add a few more areas that Amazon is quickly gaining ground on, and these are areas that we talked about in previous videos, but that includes their plans to launch 3,000 Amazon Go stores by 2021, which are cashierless food and convenience stores that some estimate could generate close to $5 billion a year in just a few years from now. And they also made an acquisition of PillPack last year, which is an online pharmacy here in the United States in an effort to disrupt the half a trillion dollar prescription market. And as if all of this wasn't enough to show off Amazon's ambitions of taking over the world, they are even investing billions of dollars into their logistics infrastructure so that they can deliver products themselves at a very fast speed without the use of third-party carriers. According to another recent survey from eMarketer, the single most important concern of online shoppers is the speed of delivery, and because of this, Amazon recently acquired a 40% stake in Atlas Air Worldwide and a 33% stake in Air Transport Services Group, both of which are the two leasing companies that Amazon uses for their prime air services that already include 50 planes, and they're also leasing out five 
new Boeing 737s from Atlas, which may grow by another 15 in the future. This is really a tiny amount of planes compared to the size of UPS and FedEx, but it's proof nonetheless that Amazon is trying to disrupt this market as well, as they already handle about 26% of all their online order shipments and only recently started listing transportation and logistics services as part of their competitors for the first time in history in their annual earnings report last year. Now their balance sheet is not anything mind blowing as both their current and total ratios are only a little bit above one, but it is absolutely solid in every other sense with a ton of current assets and a manageable amount of debt, especially when you consider how much they reinvest into the business and how incredibly fast they continue to grow despite already being so massively large. And that's ultimately what I keep coming back to with Amazon stock. And I try to defend my position against maybe some cheaper kind of value investors or even some dividend investors who would argue that I'm crazy for investing in a company with such a rich valuation. Now, sure, when looking at Amazon, you may not get a really cheap valuation. You may not get a dividend in return either. But in my opinion, sometimes in the market, you get what you pay for. And in Amazon's case, I think that they deserve a high price tag and a rich valuation because of everything that you get in return, which is a very well-run company that is dominating several different markets, and yet they still have a ton of room to keep growing in the future. Not only are they already growing at some very high rates, despite the fact that they're one of the biggest companies in the entire world, yet they still have so much growth potential in the future as I showed you in all those different charts where I showed you that there's still a lot of money left on the table for Amazon to go out and get. So for those reasons, I continue to be a long-term believer in Amazon and I even showed you their valuation. I showed you their PEG ratio compared to some other very popular stocks out there. And I actually think that Amazon could be argued as a little bit of a value as well if you take into account their enormous growth. So once you factor that in, I actually think that Amazon isn't that bad of a, of a value either. I, I'm not you know, so quick to call it a value stock, but I think there is definitely a lot of value there, even for the price that you're paying. So when I look at my position, it's really a long-term position. I'm looking out five to 10 years or longer. And to be honest with you guys, I'm really thinking decades out with Amazon because I don't think that the company is going to fundamentally change for the worse in the future. And if it does, I think I'll kind of see that coming and I'll be able to adjust and get out and not lose too much money if anything like that was to happen. But overall in the kind of long term, I really think Amazon will be a much bigger company in the future than what they are right now. And if I was to guess which company is going to reach a $2 trillion market cap first, I would probably guess that it is Amazon. So for those reasons, I'm really thinking long term with this one and I have no problem investing in them now for what I expect to get in return in the distant future. And when looking at my personal position, now I mostly bought this stock at under $1,000 a share. I did buy a little bit above, but mostly at under a thousand. And it's currently my second largest stock. So it is a huge position in my portfolio. So I don't really have a lot of need to, um, I don't really have, since I have so much exposure already to Amazon stock, I don't really have a necessity to be adding to my position at this time. But give me any kind of a correction in the market or any, especially any kind of a market crash, and I will not hesitate to buy a lot more of Amazon stock, assuming that I'm able to do so. But anyway, that's just kind of my personal opinion. Uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. By the way, I'm not telling you to, to make any kind of changes to your position. I'm just saying this is how I personally feel with my Amazon position. Uh, but again, let me know what you guys think down below. I'd love to read your comments. And thank you so much for watching the video. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed it, please consider hitting the like button. It really helps support the channel. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.